It's Dr. Laurie Santos. Welcome to Radio Headspace. If you don't know, I'm a psychology professor at Yale and host of The Happiness Lab, a podcast all about the science of happiness. Today, I'm going to talk about how gratitude can genuinely make us feel better, and I'll share some tips for how to put it into practice, even if we're not feeling all that grateful. I think we can define gratitude as a sort of two-part process. First, gratitude is about recognizing the good things in your life. Oh my gosh, this is great. You know, taste of coffee, the fact that the people I love are alive. But gratitude also has a second part, which is a sort of attribution, which is to realize, like, that didn't necessarily have to be the case. The universe is giving you this wonderful gift that that blessing exists, and it's a moment of thankfulness that you have it in the first place. There's evidence that if you regularly engage in a practice of gratitude, if you take time to experience things that you're thankful for, you wind up feeling better. You wind up self-reporting more positive emotions and a deeper satisfaction with life. And this can come even through the act of expressing gratitude to other people. One of my favorite studies by Marty Seligman and his colleagues at the University of Pennsylvania had subjects do what he calls a gratitude visit. He tells his subjects, we want you to write a letter of gratitude to someone who's been especially kind to you, but you've never thanked them. And then you have to deliver that letter in person to the person in question, and you have to read it to them. Subjects predict this might feel weird or awkward or, you know, like take too much time. But what ends up happening is the people who receive these letters find them amazing. Like they self-report it's one of the happiest moments of their lives. But what I find even more incredible is what happens to the happiness of the subjects, the people who are doing this gratitude visit. And Seligman finds that they not only get a significant boost in happiness after doing this gratitude visit, that boost seems to last for over a month. So you get a significant boost in happiness that lasts for over a month simply through expressing gratitude to other people. When people hear about gratitude practices and the importance of counting your blessings, I think sometimes people confuse it with this idea of toxic positivity, you know, which I take to mean this idea that you can't ever experience negative emotions. You have to just you know, only experience positive emotions. That's not what gratitude is about. You can recognize that you're experiencing negative emotions. You can recognize that bad things are happening in life. But you can still do some work to either see the bright side or to notice that there are still good things in life. This was something that I experienced personally during COVID. And toxic positivity would be pretending that that wasn't awful, right? Like, everything's perfect, no worries here, right? That's toxic positivity. Gratitude means recognizing that things are tough, but noticing that there are still good things. Even in the midst of lockdown, there were people I loved who were still alive, who I had the opportunity to Zoom with and connect with. And so toxic positivity is all about pretending there's nothing bad, ignoring our negative emotions. Whereas gratitude is really about noticing the blessings that are still there. And you can notice the blessings even in the worst of times. I think the simplest tip for starting a gratitude practice is to start small. You don't need to write a list of the 500 things that you're grateful for. Start with one. Every day, what's one thing that you are thankful for? Often my gratitude list is like, I saw a cat today, right? Like it doesn't have to be some mind-blowing thing. It can be really tiny. Mindfulness can be a big blessing for helping us to experience gratitude, in part because mindfulness is all about noticing stuff. That first step of gratitude is really noticing the good things. And if you're being a little bit more mindful, if you're present and paying attention, you'll start to notice the delights that are out there. You'll notice things like your partner's smile. You'll be present enough to detect the taste of your coffee. I think if you're struggling to find things you're grateful for, just asking yourself a few simple questions can help. What went well today? What was something I loved today? What was something I found delightful today? Those are just questions that can help train your attention on the good things in life. And as soon as you start to notice the good things, it becomes easier to feel more grateful for them. 